Hi, Professor Balatat. Welcome to you all in this session two of day two of STTP on Applied Computational Fluid Dynamics for Engineers. Session expert uh, is uh, Mr. Siddharth Vartakki. He is a Senior Application Specialist in Design Tech Systems Limited, General Partner of Simulation Giant Elkai Engineering. He is having over five plus years of experience in industry and academia. He has done his Masters in CFD from University of Petroleum and Energy Studies and his Bachelors from Annamalai University. Previously, he has worked with Liverpool Corporation as project engineer in simulation driven design team support, supporting product development center and project training at Altai Engineering. Currently, he is working in Design Tech System Limited as CFD resource person and supporting clients including government agencies, defense organization in CFD support, First Nation. I welcome you, sir. Thank you. And you may start your session now. Thank you so much, uh, respected faculty members and students. First of all, it's a great honor to present and um, uh, and above all, it was a very great honor to uh, have a session of uh, Professor Suman Chakravarti, uh, who has uh, been one of the key part, part during my master's and attending his some of the best lectures even today. Uh, has been a great journey. So it was very, very well organized. Thanks to the uh, institutions for doing that. Uh, my name is uh, Siddharth uh, Borkataki and <clears throat> currently I'm working as a senior application specialist supporting CFD uh, for Altair Engineering, uh, which is again uh, the channel spark, uh, for channel partners of Design Tech Systems Limited. So basically what we do is before we start what exactly the session and all the details and what industry is currently working on and on our different CFD tools. Uh, basically, Alter Engineering is one of the leading CFD and CAE simulation uh, giant, which not only does CFD CAE, plus it also does data analytics, machine learning, and various. So it's one of the uh, flag flagship organization on the CAE and well as various other technology. And it's having its head offices in Bangalore, yeah, Chennai, Pune, Delhi, across all the major cities in India. So every year, the uh, Altair is working very closely with academics uh, on, on, on the professor's projects, uh, the funded projects, plus uh, the students' community. There is something called Altair University, which every student should uh, check. You know, there are free access to all the resources, libraries, softwares, e-books. E so this is what Altair has been doing from a long time with universities. And also the best part is Altair University certified students can be beneficial in terms of placements as well. So we can discuss these topics later on just to introduce what exactly we do for universities and uh, students across uh, worldwide. So today's uh, topic is uh, about uh, CFD, different discretization techniques actually. So when we talk about discretization techniques, so basically it means uh, the governing equations of the fluid flow are discretized, are converted in a form which is understandable by the machine and this is done by the discretization methods. So the most common or the three commonly used discretization methods are finite element, finite volume and finite difference methods which uh, we have studied in our engineering uh, engineering course and curriculum finite element. Now, these discretization techniques create miracles in industry. And in our Altair, so maybe uh, there are a lot of tools in softwares in the industry and as well as in the academia people uses, which are uh, using finite volume methodology is more popular, but Altair is having tools which is uh, based on finite element than lattice Boltzmann and smooth particle hydrodynamics. So we are working on some new and advanced techniques of discretizations, 
which has uh, which has basically done remarkable results in industries and academia in solving some of the most critical uh, problems. So the name of the tools goes like that. The first tool is AccuSolve, which is uh, the software which is based on finite element based and it solves uh, the nebulous stops equations, obviously. The other tool is the name is Altair Ultra Fluid X, which is based on the discretization techniques in Betis Boltzmann. And the other tool is Nano Fluid X, which is based on smooth particle hydrodynamics. Each tool has its own uniqueness and each tool has its own uh, capability based on its uh, features and specific problems it can get in. For example, AccuSolve can be used for almost all the research organizations, institutions, uh, R&D, organizations or leading MNCs uh, who are doing on R&D activities. Students, faculty members can use this tool for solving a lot of problems, challenges related to CFD, which is based on incompressible flow, compressible multi-phase, transient, fluid structure interaction, thermal problems, etc., etc. While uh, the lattice boltzmann bet methods, which is uh, basically used for external aerodynamics. As you can see, students participating in Formula SAE wanted to understand the lift and the drag of the vehicles they are designing. So those kind of applications are also on the aeroacoustic sites. Another tool is NanoFluidX, which is particularly used for gearing and oil uh, you know, in the lubrication industries where we want to understand how the lubrication is playing a role because we are studying in our IC engine course a lot on the lubrications. But whether the lubrication is enough for the gears uh, which are continuously running in order to uh, improve uh, the efficiency. So these are the things we'll discuss in detail. So coming, we'll start one by one. We'll start with AccuSol first. So... Uh, before we start about AccuSol, just wanted to say that uh, the most uh, widely used and the most popularly renowned tool of Altair, which everybody would be knowing, is HyperMesh. So HyperMesh is a tool which is used for pre-processing. So uh, many of you might be of the opinion what exactly, or you might be knowing exactly what pre-processing means. So pre-processing is just before we do our discretization techniques, it's about converting the whole geometry into a small, small parts where the governing equations would be solved. These small, small parts can be of the shape of triad, quad, and all that. So HyperMesh is the tool that does that. And uh, our software, AccuSolve, which I am going to talk about currently, which is based on the finite element methodology, uh, is one of the industrial um, revolution software, which can do problems related to uh, different turbulence modeling. So, uh, turbulence plays a very critical role in CFD. So there are low Reynolds number flow to high Reynolds number flow. So those critical turbulence uh, modeling can be done using this tool. Uh, when we are trying to uh, study something which is rotating, let's say our fan, general fan, if you want to do a study on a fan or a blower or on the turbo machinery applications, then we need something called as a moving mesh methodology or moving mesh technology, which is, is it should be an inbuilt feature in any CFD software. So that is highly uh, robust and highly uh, well developed in the tool. Multi physics capabilities nowadays, it's an, uh, the, the industry or the academics are working on projects which is not based on a single domain. So there are a lot of involvement. There is involvement of electronics, there is involvement of electrical, there is involvement of civil, there is involvement of many other branches, mechanical. So, so here, any problem is not specifically domain to one particular thing. So we always encounter problems on. Uh, not only single physics, but different different physics, which which requires domain knowledge. So multi physics problem. Then uh, some people are preferring to write their own codes or want to write the codes and uh, apply to the software. This software has the UDF capabilities. Any problem related to particle tracing. So these are etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, a lot of functions are there. We will uh, showcase in details as I move to the uh, customer or as I move to the some real uh, cases which is being done by people uh, using this tool across the across India. So uh, this is how the uh, the GUI was uh, was to look like, and this is how the procedure is like. Um, as you can see, CFD or doing any simulations in, in in our computer machines, we always need a CAD tool. We always need our drawing. We always need a design. So that CAD is imported in the software. Meshing is done on the, uh, on the software, and then. Once the meshing is done, we apply our boundary conditions and then we solve. So basically, there are three steps process in CFD. So there is something called pre-processing number one, second is your solving, and third is 
third is your post processing so these three are the three important steps in any cfd problem pre processing takes 60% of almost our time then the rest uh, 30% of the time i would say it goes on solving the problem and 10% is your post processing which is like getting your results so this is the same process for pre processing solving and post processing three important parts of the software now to discuss in depth about the software what exactly the software has how does the software uh, is based on uh, is it based on some uh, what kind of discretization schemes it is based on what is the formulations behind so basically the software is an unstructured flow solver first of all active solve which i am talking about is a finite element code is based on unstructured flow solver and the major thing is that it's based on the galilean least square method which makes it very much robust basically you get your solutions at the first attempt that means the dependency on the mesh is very less because in cfd problem the mesh plays a very important role definitely here mesh will play an important role but the amount of time that is spent on meshing basically mesh is like the 60 to 70% of our time goes on meshing so here in this case so we are not much concerned on the meshing topology rather than we are concerned with how the mesh are connected to each other that's the most important thing over the whole geometry so that makes it very much robust speed and accuracy are the few important features of this software that that uh, differs it from any tools across uh, global so this is this is what makes this software uh, unique now uh, i will be coming on each uh, important uh, applications across the mechanical domain uh, the number one that i will be talking about is automotive design validation okay so i will start with uh, the industry number one is the automotive because in mechanical domain the automotive industry uh, is something which is occupying one of the most mature industry we as we know so any automotive uh, industry looks for results in related to cfd on different uh, products like maybe engine maybe the muffler maybe the whole vehicle externally maybe uh, on the engine uh, performance maybe on the coolant maybe on the radiator so there are a lot of things which any automotive industry does r and d on their uh, product so flow optimization and thermal optimization we can characterize their requirement based on the two important this is flow optimization and thermal optimization so under flow optimization as we can see there are certain things any automotive uh, industries engineer would like to see first of all or the flow patterns that are being developed while a fan let's say radiator fan right say it's a very hot day and uh, we are in a middle of a traffic and then we used to hear the sound of the fan uh, that indicates that you know the radiator fan is getting started so how does the flow basically looks like at that particular portion which gives an idea effective that my radiator is working fine so these things you know the flow patterns observations for that particular example a small example i am talking about then uh, on the exhaust side where we are seeing the exhaust gases coming out now nowadays we have the ph6 norms so how does the velocity pattern of those uh, would look like so these are certain uh, things which you know there are a lot of things basically i have uh, mentioned the critical points and also on the thermal also the temperature over certain components and related stuff plays a very important role so these things if can be optimized these challenges can be optimized then it benefits the industries a lot on performance then cost and increase market etc etc so now let's go in depth uh, to to what exactly the uh, automotive design uh, challenges comes into so any students uh, who wants to uh, be a part of the automotive industry should understand that these are certain challenges that comes in any automotive industries and these are such problems which are not being even solved they are comes every every now and then and automotive industries looks for people who can uh, who can give solutions in these challenges okay. now i'll come to the uh, application wise which would look more realistic basically uh, let's talk about one of the most important component of an automotive is the engine okay so uh, any engine manufacturing organization would always want to understand the how the temperature overall temperature in the engine looks like basically when actually the whole vehicle is operating so whether the engine is capable enough to maintain the temperature or is it going you know it's, it's going to have a uh, le less life of the engine because of continuous working so in that case 
what material you will be putting on the engine. Are the fins that have been designed outside the engine are effective enough? So to in answer all these kind of questions, so CNT's application plays a very crucial role in the engine. As you can see on the images here, there is an engine where we, we can study temperature distribution, velocity profile, uh, heat transfer calculations, pressure distribution. These are some of the critical parameters we study on an engine performance. Talking about the exhaust, as we can see, exhaust industries plays, uh, exhaust industries basically want to understand what is the back pressure calculations whenever there is an actual uh, working happening on the vehicle, it's working. And then uh, there would be on an exhaust, if you talk about it, an exhaust muffler, or there would be a catalytic converter system where it will have perforated plates or porous media where exhaust will go, it will be trapped. And then you know the hamlet cases will go out. So those kind of physics, uh, and also uh, understanding the velocity and temperature distributions along with calculations of uniformity index, further helping the overall design. So this is one of the areas where exhaust industries works on. Uh, similarly, exhaust gas recirculations, EGR. Uh, the effective design of EGR depends on how important an EGR component can maintain the temperature, or whether that EGR is having the effectiveness of maintaining a proper temperature. That's very important. So all the automotive enthusiastic people or all, all the automotive specialists, you know, design EGR based on parameters like the pressures, uh, how much is the temperature is inside the EGR going, whether it is exceeding the certain limit. So based on these flow patterns, so as you can see on the second image at the top, there is a flow pattern that, that, that goes on, which, uh, which plays a very important role on the EGRs. Then, uh, similarly to that, there is something called EGR valves, uh, which uh, designs purely depends on, again, the valves opening and closing phenomena should be understood very well. Uh, apart from that, what is the flow that is going inside the valve? Is it, does it mean uh, exceeding its certain limit? So understanding the flow, understanding the pressure variations across that valve and optimizing it is an important parameter. Also, the path of the flow. So these things are cannot be done. Uh, we, do, we cannot see them on an experimental setup. That's something which uniqueness of the CFD gives us. So this is how the CFD is playing a role on an industrial setup. Uh, also on the larger segments, these are all the components that we are talking about, engine, exhaust, etc., etc. Now what we want to talk about when there is an uh, air flowing inside certain important critical parameters inside the uh, vehicle. So as you can see, there's a big truck and if we see uh, the areas where there are engines, where there are radiators, you know, that heat that it emits during an operations is tremendously very high. Whether the air that goes inside the grill can reach those areas where the temperature reduction, velocity reduction, or the performance can be studied. So this is something called as underwood simulation. So this play, this is one of the key aspects. All the leading major OEMs or autom automotive industries does that. Uh, for example, you are sitting inside a bus and we are going to from one place to another. Whether the bus is, uh, whether we are getting the amount of air or the AC that, uh, that circulates the air is enough for the passenger sitting near the bus driver to the passenger sitting at the last seat. So those kind of analysis comes under cabin HVAC. HVAC stands for heating, ventilation and air conditioning. So here, as you can see from the CFT, we understand you know, whether the positioning of these uh, heating, ventilation ducts is enough or not to reach the uh, customer or to reach the people who are sitting. Wheels, uh, we may be a little concerned how wheels, uh, where wheels will be uh, playing a role on the, on the, on the CFD. Now, uh, wheels are a kind of um, important part where we, we tend to understand that wheel friction is a, an important role that wheels is playing. But effective flow inside the wheel vents plays a very important role in maintaining the wear and tear of the uh, entire wheel. So in such a case, the CFD plays a role in understanding the storage across the, those vents so that we can design wheels which have a better life. 
So these are done, this year they are done by some of the renowned organizations uh, across India, globally, who does this uh, work on the wheels. Uh, EGR bulbs, uh, as already I have mentioned clearly on what areas the EGR bulbs basically does or EGI industries looks for. So we are not restricted to one particular thing. Uh, in the lightning industry, also in the bulbs, you know, we see the automotive bulbs uh, where, so, so designing those bulbs is one aspect. Getting the effective temperature on the bulb. So, uh, the automotive headlamps industries or the automotive headlamps uh, requires proper temperature distribution because there is conduction, convection, and radiation, three things happening all together. When we switch on a vehicle's bulb, uh, we see that the bulb is emitting some amount of energy in terms of heat. There is convection happening because there is air inside. Radiation by default would be there. So, those three phenomena needs to be accurately understand so that the bulb does not damage and designing has to be done in such a way that effective temperature reaches and it do not go beyond. So these are certain critical important things which lighting industries looks for. So these are some of the work done by leading OEMs and organizations on different uh, CFD domain, exhaust, HVAC, on the fans and on the valves. Again, on the valve side, on there is something called DOE, which is called as a design of experiments, where different parameters are being run, and CFD gives you the final optimized one, which is uh, basically your uh, the final product that would come as a during the production. So, uh, may I just stop? Uh, there might be some questions if I or we can take it later. Okay, no problem. We'll take at the questions at the at, at the later of the part. Okay, thanks. I'll continue. Now, uh, apart from the automotive industry, it's a very interesting topic. I'd like to tell everyone: it's a battery thermal management. So, right now the trend is towards electric vehicle, which is the uh, next industrial thing which students, uh, faculty members, would be looking for to enhance their work, and also students can enhance their job related work and make them employable on the EV segment. So now the most important part, you will see the IC engine, internal combustion engine will be removed completely and there will be a battery placed on that part. So how interesting it be? As a century wise, we know the IC engine is, is been working on. Even now, the IC engines are, are, are playing a role. But now the EV trend is that those engine will be removed and will be placed entirely over a pack of batteries. Along with the batteries, there will be your motors, definitely. So th this is a two-way they are doing. As a mechanical engineer, it is important that these batteries do not burn. Because let's say we are traveling from Ahmedabad to Mumbai, I am traveling from, let's say, from one part of India, about 300, 400 kilometers across it. I must be safe, or my family must be safe while driving so that battery do not burn. Now, who gives a guarantee on that? That's where your something called as battery thermal management comes into picture. So battery thermal management is effectively keeping the battery in such a manner so that you design a coolant as well on the battery so that your battery do not exceed the limit. This is what industry is currently looking for. Now, this study shows that uh, how the performance of the battery and also the battery life vary over a period of time. For electric vehicle industry in India, the biggest challenge is in India, let's say we are at, uh, let's say at Chennai, where the temperature reaches at around 35, 40, or even more than that. We are in New Delhi, where temperatures go even 45 plus, or right now the temperature is around 13 to 17 degree currently, where I am right now in Delhi. On the western side of the India, there's a difference. It's on the northeastern side of the there are different temperatures. So, how effectively we can make battery which stays for three to five years at least because nowadays all battery manufacturers are giving guarantee of three years time or max to max five years time but next time the government says that we need batteries which gives eight years of time so that might be because in european nations batteries or even germany they are making batteries which have a lifetime of eight years but in an india where temperature across the whole country is so different so how can we make batteries which runs as well as they give a life of that 
this is where the whole thing comes into picture this is where the engineers are spending their times and efforts and dedications now to make an effective battery is not just about having the right battery with the best chemical properties it's not about that is about what is the media that is making the battery to cool are we using the natural air which is a natural convection or no we are using a coolant like ethylene glycol as a coolant to reduce the temperature when the car is actually running and battery is getting heated up and the coolant which are being used what is the pump back behind so pump is forcing the coolant to go out what is the sizing of the pump shall i go for an active cooling or passive cooling will the battery give an warranty to me can i integrate the uh, the whole battery pack with bms or cn systems can we integrate with the softwares i need to maintain a temperature of this this much this is the temperature i have to take so these things are so complicated first of all in order what we have done we have taken a standard literature of a research paper and uh, we we have uh, we have taken a battery pack with uh, challenging conditions and our solver acusolve which which is i uh, think a very useful software in finite element based uh, discretization techniques have done a remarkable great work so these are some of the features which uh, have, are necessary for effective battery management design so this is what we have taken so we have taken a pack which has around 208 batteries generally a pack consists of blocks like 1500 1, 2000 large blocks consists of batteries so we have taken a pack uh, from a literature which has 208 batteries and also this is the design of the cad i am showing and below we can see the coolant inflow and the coolant outflow that means this is the a uh, battery mechanism which is not using air as a media to cool it is instead using coolant so coolant is ethylene glycol which is the market standard right now is being used and ethylene glycol coolant properties these are all taken from the literatures which we have taken and again one important information is that the heat flux that is on the battery surface is 54.04 watt per meter square because this is very important when we do a simulations we will need to input certain boundary conditions so that your software runs it gives you results which makes sensible and to make those results sensible and correct we need correct boundary conditions and you can think one observation is a base plate which is aluminum so at the bottom there is a small uh, uh, aluminum plate you can see in little bit of brown color so that's been kept at the bottom for heat transfer enhancements purpose and also a coolant channel is also being shown so whenever the battery runs this cool also travels and it takes away the heat so taking all these data this is a cad model along with these boundary conditions uh, we have tried to do our first simulations so based on the first simulations we got some idea that the battery uh, not only the some idea we got actually very in depth idea i would say where we can see uh, there is a rise of around 37.7 degree centigrade maximum temperature at the battery top surface and the minimum that is going is something around coming 31.6 degree centigrade now as an engineer what is our first observation is just not to see this color and say that this uh, this is my my work is done no the thing is how can i reduce this 37.7 degree centigrade further can i think of something uh, innovation or can i think of something very simple yet uh, it can it can do some real good um, change can can we think of that in that line that's where we we did a very simple thing we provided another aluminum plate at the top we thought this may work uh, because there's already an aluminum top at the bottom so how about we put an another aluminum top at the top because we seen that the temperature is rising at the top portion of the battery and we performed an analysis and uh, we have seen that and after doing that there is a sudden decline of around 35.7 degrees centigrade maximum at certain areas so this is one of the design improvement that we have done but again this is a project which is taken from a literature standard literature along with coolants this is having coolant we are not using any air here natural air is not letting to flow we are not using the natural convection same project now what we are doing is removing the entire coolant the pack there is no coolant here we are letting the air to flow across this and we are letting the natural air to take away the heat that is generated by uh, this um, battery is and uh, this battery is operating and as we can see we need the air flow cfm at uh, 30 degree centigrade we have considered as per the pressure sir and then this is the heat flux which is a same 54.14 meters square 
and also we got some similar uh, results. We seen that air also also doing a good work with uh, highest temperature coming up 36.23 degree and minimum is 32.8 degree centigrade. So this is one of our study. Now uh, we can continue this. We are actually working on this, uh, and we have a lot of uh, EV enthusiastic uh, organizations uh, started by very young people. Uh, we've been completing their bachelors and also the universities are also associated in supporting those ideas. So we are closely working with them as well. Now, as the EV is trending, something that is again coming parallelly is the electronics industry. Integrated circuits, um, chips, magnets, uh, motors, board level work, component level work, system level work. Industry is looking for smallest of the smallest minute products with measured improvement efficiency. So what exactly electronics industry is actually looking for and how our software finite element based AccuSolve is helping the electronics industries in achieving some of their most uh, challenging problems. So here, as you can see, uh, this, these are the certain challenges which comes into an electronics industry that manufactures PCBs, uh, mobile phones, uh, and where the three important heat transfer phenomena, conduction, convection, and LSS radiation, plays an important role, uh, along with the fans, small, small fans placed, uh, as you can see in the small, uh, in a PCB board, there are certain fans which are being kept just to improve, uh, enhance the heat transfer. And so these are certain challenges that plays in a very small area. So this, is, this is what I was talking about on the challenges in thermal management and what exactly engineers can do here on these areas. Now I'll talk about uh, some of the work done by some leading organizations. So uh, on electronics, uh, on the electronics industry. So as you can see, the first one is a shelter cooling. So this is used, shelter cooling is a very important uh, part in our defense industries. So basically what exactly happens in a shelter cooling, there would be a room uh, which is having lot of uh, lot of components like there are some uh, heat emitting devices okay so let's say there is a small room and there are a lot of uh, there are certain machine there are certain devices which are generating heat as they work which are generating heat as a result of which the whole room gets heated up now as an engineer we need to effectively design a thermal management for that kind of challenges so whether can we place fan because defense has certain regulations. Can you can you may not be able to put a fan? There may be some or you need to can you put an AC? If yes, where to put the AC? And what will be the size of the AC? Uh, or if I say uh, no, you, you need to understand that how uh, first of all you want to understand without using fan and AC, can the normal air uh, help in uh, taking away the heat, how it will be the scenario. So those are certain uh, challenges in the shelter cooling applications and software helps you uh, in understanding the temperature. Now, these all things that I'm showing you are done by uh, some of the leading engineers uh, or the renowned people across the industry in defense and R&D uh, using our software. Second is from a shelter cooling, I'm calling to a very small box, as you can see, where there's a PCB as a resistor. And when actually the current starts to flow, uh, we tend to see there's a joule heating that comes into picture and uh, as a result of which there's a certain temperature rise. So how effectively we can design those and in order to reduce that temperature. So these are certain challenges. Uh, again, similar industry on the electronics components. So here's a bush bar assembly where we see a bush bar is always connected to certain parts. So as a bush bar gets heated, its adjoining parts, let's say a connector, uh, is all, gets also heated at the same time. So how effectively we can design uh, certain components on those bush bars and make changes and improve the temperature distributions. Uh, this is a, the figure below is talking about on an electronics chip uh, where there is a PCB, there are fans, there are a lot of heat emitting devices and whether effectively can we place the fan. Uh, in order to reduce those temperatures. So in details, the work that I was talking about, what exactly the bus bar thing that just shown out. So basically the bus bar is connected to the connector assembly. Okay. So there is uh, the current and voltage being supplied. So we get the power out of it. And as a result of which uh, the heat that is being generated in terms of heat source. This, so these are certain calculations that we do. 
Okay, so this is, uh, we do those calculations and what available data we have is that we know what's the air temperature and what is the air velocity. So using that, we do our first simulation and we see uh, the areas of concern. And based on that, we go for improvements. So this is being done here. Uh, BCU units, uh, this is again one of the work done by our leading organizations. So which makes uh, components for the train industry, for our railways. So BCU units, when we talk about BCU, so BCU units, should be kept in such a way that there cannot be any fan placed near a BCU unit. That is quite challenging. So if a BCU gets hit, you cannot put a fan and let the air, let the BCU get cooled up. So there is certain rules and regulations. So they want to understand how effectively air can be used to reduce the temperature over a period of time. So this is one of the work done by this organization on the BCU unit. Uh, very similar applications. Uh, these are all uh, public Case, these are all available so online. You can go through these papers, uh, which are published in the Technology Conference, ATC, which is held everywhere in India, uh, which every, every year in India, uh, and where some of the best uh, organizations publish their work. So this is uh, one of the work where there is enclosure, capacitor, integrated circuit, inductor, and PCB. And all these are made of different, different materials with different specific heat and conductivity. So in small table or in a small area, these are all kept. So with different conductivity and thermal properties and how, you know, when they actually operate, is it safe or how effectively they are working? So understanding those using CFD is actually remarkable. So this is the work that in more details with uh, properties, these are all available online. Uh, one important thing, data centers, which uh, is now very common and a lot of data centers are kept, you can see on the defense and our um, leading educational organizations, we see data centers where there are a lot of servers are there and they are throughoutly run and, and maintaining optimum temperature is very, very critical on those data centers. So we'd like to talk about uh, how basically a data centers looks like. So you can see the server machines are kept and uh, it is very clean. We are generally not allowed to wear shoes when we go near to the server room so that the dust particles should not be emitted. So there are certain rules and regulations. In CFD, how data center is playing a role. So as you can see here, uh, this is a top view section I'm showing for a data centers where uh, the tiles, tiles basically on the bottom of the data centers, you can see uh, there are some opening posts where you know, the air gets flow across. So this is how so, you know, the air flow inside the data centers uh, generally looks like and so that uh, very criticality is that it should be very well understood whether air reaches to all the parts uh, in the data centers. So this is how, you know, the data centers uh, air flow distributions looks like during the server room, which has to be done continuously. So this is how the temperature variations looks like over a period of time. If some certain components or certain PCs gets heated over a period of time, so how it basically looks like and how the temperature reduces starts to work. This is again observing the results from a streamline point of view, which we study in our fluid mechanics streamlines and we are applying here right now in the software. So that's what uh, the, the things is. So this is, this is about the data center's conclusions. Coming to one of the most uh, important industries, heating, ventilation, and conditioning. So this is a very big industry. So as you can see on the figures, uh, you are inside your car, uh, air, air, the AC is on. That's again, a part of your HVAC. Uh, if you go to any some restaurants, you can see on the kitchen, there is a outlet, you know, which, uh, which, which takes out those hot cases, how effectively that should be worked. You go to supermarkets and let's say I want to take curd or certain things which are kept in refrigerators. So you can see large refrigerators which are not used by our in our household. So are those refrigerators good enough uh, to keep your uh, items fresh enough? So these are these are something that your AC. So these are comes under your heating, ventilation and air conditioning industry. So this is one of the cases where you see um, the airs reaching to individual Again, obviously, I would like to take one thing that is the COVID situations right now where you can see how effectively if someone sneezes, uh, how much time does it has taken to reach the person on the other side. So again, that's again one of the case that inside a room, if you're talking about uh, an air is flowing. 
So that is uh, an interesting topic right now that comes under HVAC. So if you go to any flight, if somebody is traveling on flight right now, the flights inside are doing a very unique way of air circle distribution. So that you know anyone who sneezes, that air particles goes out. But that's something comes under your HVAC and uh, in HVAC industry. So. What is the mechanism in an HVAC industry? So basically in any heating, ventilation and air conditioning industry where there are ACs and fans. So basically there will be one porous region and there will be a blower which is inside your AC and it will circulate those air basically on you, uh, on the air surrounding. So this is how a 2D analysis has been done as well for keeping the important components of an HVAC. So I was talking about this uh, refrigerator concept where you can see one of the leading uh, refrigerant industry uh, is working on CFD in understanding how the temperature is distributed on a refrigerator and also they're doing a lab test as well so that they're correlating the CFD with the lab test. Air cooler, it may look simpler, just switch on it, the airflow will, uh, will, will hit us and we'll be, we'll be, having a, we'll be able to uh, feel better but the way of making an air cooler is uh, using CFD, getting the best air flow is a very important and challenging area. So this is how an air cooler is being modeled, where you can see a fan, there will be a porous region, and how effectively the fan is able to throw the air. And then the CFD results are being tested, and that's the way you know, people are doing R&D across. Uh, this is for an AC, where you can see the blower inside an AC, how effectively it is able to take, you know, effectively throw air across a large room uh, under certain conditions and how closer we are to the CFD results and experimental is also being shown with the correlation reaching very good. This is a bionic fan. So if you just go back of your AC and see the fan, which is actually playing an important role, that's a bionic axial fan, which designs plays a very important role in effective uh, working of an AC and this is again done using our uh, tool. So this fan uh, that we are right now might be uh, switching on your AC and you're getting the air and that's because this is being done using an optimized airflow and then the proper fan design using CFP. Uh, lastly, I would like to come to the pumps and the valves industry which are also using uh, CVFT in a very bigger way. Uh, to do majority of their work. So pumps and blowers and axial fans comes under your turbo applications. So here the challenge is uh, how the pump is working or the mechanism of the pump, whether it's a positive displacement pump or it's a, it's a, it's a different, another, uh, it's a centrifugal pump or it's a axial pump. So the methodology of working is different. But CFD is applied based on how the metal is used. If it's a positive replacement pump, then there's something called mass motion, which is your mass will be moving. It's a, in, in case of a passage positive displacement pump. But if it's a uh, centrifugal or an axial pump where uh, you know it is taking the fluid and then axially it is uh, rotating and then radially it is throwing out, for example, then that rotating part has to be modeled using something called as a reference frame or a sliding mesh methodology. So this is how the pumps industry are using CFD's features in order to solve their problem, as well as the valve. So it's a DCV valve or a PCV valve, or it's a butterfly valve. So uh, effective use of the software in designing is uh, being done. So these are some of the benefits uh, people across worldwide are getting by using our finite element based code. And this is one of the leading organizations which is working uh, for our uh, for improvement of their pumps uh, using our tool. So that's uh, that's about our finite element based uh, code, which is uh, very scalable, robust, and it's being used for a variety of applications, which I have shown now. Now I'll be taking some more time just to explain on two other important. Uh, softwares which are not based on finite element methodology discretization but are based on SPH which is smooth particle hyperdynamics and lattice Boltzmann methods. So this is a tool called NanoFluidX uh, which is again uh, based on the, uh, just a second I think I got a question probably somebody has been. 
Okay, so I'll get back to you, sir, on the pneumatic uh, conveying. So I'll, I'll I'll unmute you maybe by the end of the session, and I'll take your questions in detail. So uh, now this is a this is a software that is based on uh, something called as smooth particle hydrodynamics, and this is actually or particularly used for only oiling or gears gearbox. So we see that uh, gearbox failure is a very common uh, challenge in the industry, and one of the main reason is that the lubrication is not effective enough or it is not reaching those areas where duplication should have reached. And it is leading to uh, the gearbox to get failure because of the wear and heat stresses. Now, we understand that uh, lubrication, if we understand what are the types of lubrications and material lubrication, but can we actually see when actually the gearbox is operating and lubrication is flowing, how, how great it would be if we can see actually in reality. Obviously, we cannot take out the when the car is moving, the vehicle is moving, the truck is moving, basically. We cannot open or somebody can stick there and see the lubrication. It's very tough, obviously. These are some of the lubrications uh, in detail in, inside a gearbox failure, basically. So you can see, you know, effective lubrications do not fall and creates a lot of problem. However, does it mean that uh, we can fill 100% of the lubrications entirely on the gearbox and then let it be, okay, fine, this is, we have put entire lubrications, now the gear will, no, it's not, we cannot do that because if we use entire lubrications, because that would create a lot of problems on our environment because it will lead to a higher emissions in the energy, that's the strict norms which are being raised by our government. So we cannot use, there's a limit of the use of lubrications. Now, what we do is basically, in earlier days, there was a different methodology of uh, doing. People used to do everything on the hand design. They were to make a design. Based on the design, they create those design and based on that, they feel that it's the correct design where effective lubrication will take place. That's one of the ways. So again, definitely low cost. We have computers. Final volume-based CFT tools are there, but they are very, very expensive and they take months and years in order to solve this kind of problem, which is very, very challenging. Now, in order, there, there's a tool which is based on smooth particle hydrodynamics, and it takes very less time in solving such challenges. So here you see the third figure where uh, uh, the lubrications uh, is being shown and how effectively it is reaching the areas where uh, a lubrication is needed to understand, which leads to the design. So this is one of the work done by the scientists in Altius, which have uh, which have done a case on the engine crankcase filling on a full uh, four-cylinder engine with this kind of specifications. And to tell you, uh, one, you know, to do such kind of a simulations in any normal CFD tool, it will take merely a month or 15 days. But it has taken four days, 18 hours of time uh, with this particular tool to solve such complexity on the physics where you see the effective lubrications during an engine operation because the whole engine is being converted to particles, small, 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 small particles. On those particles, your governing equations will be solved. That means once the lubrication will, uh, the oil will flow, the oil is having certain amount of uh, basically, it will solve the navier stokes equations on those particular small, small, small nodes. And as a result of which, you can see this. So that's how the uh, process is based on. Uh, it's not a based on mass where you do a pre-processing. It's not based, based on particles. So it's basically, you can say it's a mass-free technique. You don't have to mesh, so which, which saves a lot of time. So these are some of the industries which have been beneficial of uh, using this tool. Uh, this is again one of the oldest customer, one of the first and new customer which has done uh, this kind of things and got validated with that. Uh, as I was talking about on multi physics, uh, obviously, once you understand the flow, velocity, pressure uh, inside the, the lubrications, there is uh, something that you want to also do a co coupling simulations where using uh, finite element based code, which is one of the very leading tool that we have in all day, is a radius. So CFD results can be mapped with structural in order to further simulate on a structural analysis point of view. So it's a co-coupling. Okay, so that is also being possible. Now to run such kind of uh, softwares, you don't need a computer which is having a CPU, but we need something called as a we need a graphics cards basically. So these are recommended graphics cards which are being used to run this kind of simulations. 
This is the last part of the presentation. So I'll be having another two, three slides. So this is another tool, which is Ultra, Ultra Fluidex. So this tool is based on, uh, not on SPH, but it's based on lattice Boltzmann method, which the figure itself shows that you can uh, do an external aerodynamics, which is very, very attractive. And for a mechanical engineer, if I remember my days during my engineering, then uh, these are certain uh, attractive thing when a car we see with the wakes and the drag behind, it's something uh, attracts us. So this is a tool that's being used by leading organizations uh, where they want to do external aerodynamics, not for a, even a car, you can do for a bike and any other stuff you want to do. So this tool has been made specially for understanding very high, uh, largely LES based turbulence models and it is a certain of its features. So this can be done using Altair's virtual wind tunnel tool where it takes very less time for uh, doing so. Even a very new user can learn this without a mass of a ease. And this is the results that you can extract out of the software like wall CS rays. Apart from lift and drag, we can always do other stuff like time average velocity controls so also surface looks like that. So this we can do on that part. So uh, this is all about uh, these presentations on different discretization techniques. We started with AccuSol, which is finite element based discretization techniques. Then the lubrication based, which is based on smooth particle hydrodynamics. And this is ultra fluidics, which is again based on a different discretization system, that is both methods. So I'd be happy to take questions. Yes, sir. So, uh, Mr. Bharat Yadav, you may ask your question, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so let me read his question. So yeah. Pneumatic. pneumatic vein. So can you throw some light on pneumatic and vein too? Okay. So, uh, so yes, we in pneumatic conveying system. When we talk about, uh, there's a lot of things that. That, that are there. But using CFD, um, we can definitely create uh, uh, basically whatever you have made your design, uh, pneumatic conveying for whatever applications it can be. So using, new, uh, using CFD, we can first of all effectively uh, understand the areas where, the, uh, where, where there is a need for improvement on your design, maybe on, on uh, improvement in terms of your uh, design certain parameters or maybe on the improvements of your flow so yes it can be done but right now i do not have any public thing to show on the pneumatic conveying. we are working with a lot of organizations on pneumatic conveying uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe what i can do is i'll share my mail id and maybe sir can contact me on on those areas but currently i don't have any public case to show us all are uh, very much confidential stuff which i cannot show but yes we have done uh, on on a lot of organizations working on the pneumatics. How CLT helps in space applications? So space, I will understand aerospace more details. Or you are talking about space, which are uh, well, let's say mass mission on all that. So I'll, yes, I'll sir, I am talking about the satellites and all the things. Okay. Very nice question. So first of all, when we go to that uh, satellite applications, first of all. Uh, the combustion, the combustion phenomena that takes place. So we studied in our science school that based on Newton's third law, uh, how you know whether whenever there is a propulsion takes place. So that combustion that happens uh, in order to take the missile from one part of, I mean, from our let's say from our India to the outer space. So that combustion phenomena, uh, which produces tremendous amount of energy and heat. That has to be done, CLT has to be done in order to effectively understand whether the combustion is efficient enough or not, first of all, to take the rocket or whatever it is to, from one part to the outer space. Second thing is uh, the fuel cells. Uh, fuel cells are being used if you, for, for, for all those areas. You cannot use a general fuel. So fuel cells are being used or um, batteries. So battery technology. Is, a, is an area where people are working on that. Then third is external aerodynamics, the design, 
and design of the loops because these are highly compressible flow. So, so, so understanding the flow and effective design is, is something which. So yes, there are there are a uh, lot of applications on that, and we can. I hope uh, you know it, it's countless applications on that. So uh, Bharat sir has Mr. Bharat has CFD used in erosion of band. So can I understand your question? Can you unmute yourself in detail? Uh, I want yes, to understand. Sir, are you able to hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir, actually, uh, the, this is my PhD problem. I am doing okay. work in band erosion. Acha, okay. And okay. Uh, I am using this fluent 18.2 for this. Okay. I am just in starting phase. Uh, okay. For actually, uh, um, I have worked in IIT Delhi. We are doing mm -hmm. my MPS. And mm -hmm. uh, in that, um, we have done the experimental work on pilot plant. Mm -hmm of pneumatic conveying. But okay, now okay. I want to put it uh, in mathematical modeling also. And for okay, mathematical okay, okay. modeling, I want to uh, ask this query, how I can use this CFD and uh, which, uh, which software is better for me for uh, mathematical modeling of this particular problem? Uh, to answer your question, sir, um, I think in IIT Delhi, where uh, they are using a lot of softwares, I think math, MathWorks they are using. Uh, yes, sir, math lab. MathLab, yes. um, my professor was uh, Professor R. K. Pandey, sir, and uh, okay, they are okay. using MathLab. And they are ma making the programming in MathLab. Okay, 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 okay. So, so there are there are like say, I will suggest you like uh, for research based, you should always look for open source uh, applications. That should be my advice. Uh, if again, like in IIT Delhi, there is a lot of there's a lab for Altair. Okay, uh, there's a lab for Altair. You can you can go and check. Uh, there's a lot of Altair software are there. So if you can go, uh, do we have a mathematical modeling tool uh, which is uh, Altair Compose and activate. So these are the two tools, Compose and Activate. So I'll write the name, Compose and Activate. So uh, you can write, write a mail to me, uh, okay, on, on this. So I'll share my mail ID as well. Uh, and, um, yes, sir, actually, CFD 18.2, which is our NCS, that can be used, sir. No, definitely. Software is your NCS, you can do it. Definitely, and this problem will be in your NCS, and it will be in our software. तो आपके पास जो अवेलेबल है भाई आप उससे यूज करो मैं ऑटो से हूं तो ये नहीं बोलूंगा कि आप ऑटो ही यूज करो बेसिकली आपको जो कंफर्टेबल लग रहा है बिकॉज़ दोनों सॉफ्टवेयर लीडिंग है मार्केट में दोनों में ही होते हैं तो आप अगर चाहेंगे कि आप यूज करना चाहते हैं हमारे टूल में प्लीज आप मेरे से टच में रहिए यू कैन मेल मी एंड आईआईटी दिल्ली में मैं हमारे तीन चार वेरी रिनोन प्रोफेसर है जिनके साथ हम काफी टाइम से काम कर रहे हैं तो हम कनेक्ट करा सकते हैं अगर आपको हेल्प चाहिए तो सर बिल्कुल सर हेल्प चाहिए कि सर दैट्स व्हाई आई एम आस्किंग दिस क्वेरीज विद यू सर शुर 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 आप मुझे मेल डाल दीजिए एक्चुअली क्या होता है कई बार मैथमेटिकल मॉडलिंग में ना कुछ चीजें मोनोटोनस हो जाती है समझ में नहीं आती है है ना करेक्ट 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 एक्चुअली सर चीजें इतनी क्लियर होती नहीं है कई बार प्रॉब्लम्स आती हैं एंड ऑन दोस प्लेसेस रिक्वायर योर हेल्प सर Surely, 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 definitely, definitely. So, आप एक बार on Altair website में जाके compose and activate जो मैंने यहाँ पे लिखा है, sir please check this. और आप उसमें आपको बहुत सारे information मिल जाएंगे. YouTube में काफी सारे videos हैं understanding के लिए. और अभी आजकल mathematical modeling एक बहुत demanding चीज़ है, which which is very helpful as well. One D बोलते हैं नेटली हम, not three D but one D. Yes, okay sir. All the best for your work, sir. Please uh, thank keep you, in touch. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, any further questions from other participants? Good question, Mr. Shah. Uh, very good question. <clears throat> How CFD can help in battery thermal management using phase change material? Uh, see, phase change material, first of all, uh, is very costly. The most important thing. Industries are still uh, not using it much, uh, if you talk about Indian market. So, until and unless we get a phase change material, which is costly, cost-effective, uh, then only we can actually uh, come to a battery thermal management. Which can. Now, if how about the European industries or European companies are using phase cell materials? So, so phase cell material is basically uh, in CMD, first of all, when we have a material which 
changes his face from one to the other. So in that case, you can observe uh, over what period of time the phase change is taking place and the whole phase change phenomena from liquid to gas or maybe solid to liquid, whatever the phase change may be. You can observe, number one thing. And because of the phase change, how effectively my uh, heating is getting reduced, second thing you can observe. So these are the two critical things which uh, phase change uh, material is. But right now, the, my to my understanding, on working on the leading organizations across India, and the phase change is material is still on the very uh, initial phase. Hello. Hello. Sir, uh, so that's, uh, uh, sir uh, I have yes. the same okay. question of Chit Shah, but I want to know that the, 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 you give that answer. The, if this thing helps mm. in cryogenic, this will be mm. same for cryogenic also, cryogenic engineering, where that uh, mm. phase is also changing in Yes, cryogenic. good question. Correct. Yes, yes. Cryogenic also. Yes, very good question. Aapka naam Arpit Prajapati, right? Okay. So, uh, phase change material or used in cryogenic applications may be the same way we can we can uh, understand how the phase change is taking place and what is the effectiveness you are getting. Basically, before you do your product, you get the clarity by a new computer screen. That's what, the, what physics is happening inside, which is, cannot be observed in, with our real in life, can be done in CAT. That's the thing. So, if there is a flow involvement, is a temperature thermal involvement, that's where you get CAT. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any further questions? Okay, so to other participants, I would like to convey, if you have any other query, you can mail your queries to me and uh, I'll just put the same to our expert and I'll let you know the answer. Fine? So that's it. We can deal in this way too. Surely, 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 surely. I'll be happy to answer that, sir. Surely. So in case there are no further queries, I would uh, like to thank Mr. Siddharth for this uh, such a wonderful presentation. Uh, this is why we have included person from industry too, because we know uh, practical and theory. These things are uh, at other corners. And uh, we have seen uh, the way he has shown different applications in their work and how the clarity we could get in any problem, no matter how complex it is. So with this, on behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department, A.T. Patel Institute of Technology, Anders University, I would like to thank. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's an honor yes, to have sir. it for, for future. Yeah. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much. Sure. Yeah. Bye-bye. Take care. So with this, uh, we end our session two for day two. Now the session three for today will be at 3 p.m. And uh, the expert is again from industry, Mr. Ishan Vyas. And he's uh, from CADFAM, Private Limited. So again, uh, I request all of you to join at 3 p.m. Sure. Thank you so much for joining this session. Have a nice time.
ಅದಕ್ಕೆ